one second. And okay, very good. Well, hey, Michael, thanks thanks again for joining us today. We are really excited to have you, and we're, we're excited how quickly we were able to make this happen. I think we were looking at the uh, runner's world the, the other day and begin to see all this, and we're, we're a little bit late to the show, but excited to have you on. And for those who, who don't have background on that, we'll introduce that in just a minute. But uh, thanks for taking some time out again, Michael. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Trey. I appreciate you uh, inviting me. It's exciting to be here on the show. Absolutely. So, hey, so give us, uh, before we kind of dive into the whole runner's world thing, give us give us a little background on you, Michael. Uh, did you have a running background at all? And then talk to us about uh, kind of kind of what led to the uh, led to the runner's world. Of course, I know you were training for uh, for a marathon. So, you know, just kind of give us a little bit of history on you. That'd be great, Michael. Yeah, so I wasn't really ever much of a runner until about four years ago when a friend pretty much conned me into signing up for the Live Strong Austin Marathon back in 2012. Um, I'd lost a little bit of weight, so I felt like my knees could actually handle the the, the grind of training. So I, I jumped right into it and um, was able to complete that first marathon. Um, that was back in February of 2012. And it was six weeks after that that I was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma. And really without that diagnosis after the Live Strong, which was uh, quite ironic, the Live Strong Marathon, um, I don't know if I would have kept running after that. It was just kind of, I could, I, you know, a bucket list type of thing. But really, it was that um, that race and really my desire to keep running and stay healthy is, is what kind of led me to continue uh, running after that moment and um, also led to me eventually becoming a coach for the Cancer to 5K program here in Chicago, which is a free 12 week training program for survivors to get back in shape after health. Uh, one of the kind of extra benefits of running that I found over the course of um, training after going through my my cancer treatment was just how much it helped me mentally, um, physically, and spiritually to be able to to continue to move past the disease. And I really wanted to share that with other people. And I think that's what kind of caught the attention of Runner's World and why it made my story, I, I guess, somewhat inspirational for other people is just the impact that I can have and and that my story can have on the lives of other cancer survivors. Yeah, and talk to us a little bit about uh, kind of going back that, back to that that first marathon. What what were the what were the emotions? How, how was that first marathon experience for you? I loved my first marathon experience. It was uh, the training was almost my favorite part. When I crossed the finish line, it was kind of this anticlimactic thing. Like, okay, well now what? That's uh, now it's done. What am I going to do? It's kind of uh, like I didn't expect to be sad at the end of it. I mean, I, I look back at my training and had these very special moments where you know I, I still cross streets where I remember the song that I was listening to, and it's like, oh yeah, like a little tear to my eye thinking about the the original training. Um, and that's really what I was going through at that time. And it was also, um, it was, I, I was experiencing some symptoms of cancer at the time too. I just didn't really quite know it. And I think the training really masked a lot of what I was going through. And it wasn't until after the race that um, I really started noticing some major issues. There'd been a number of things for about eight months leading up to the race, but it was really afterwards when I quit running, quit training, quit doing anything, and then continued to lose just a ton of weight and then ended up being hospitalized just six weeks after the after the race. So the marathon was in 2012, correct? Yes, that was. Okay. And so it was shortly thereafter where you were, where you were hospitalized. And, and, and tell, tell us about the whole process that, that, that you had to go through. So um, you, you mean for just right after the, after yeah, the marathon? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. yeah. So um, it was you know, like I said, I just lost a ton of weight and my uh, my wife was kind of getting a little bit concerned and asking me, you know, what do you think? Do you, do you kind of like how you look right now? And I was like, well, about a week ago, I would have said yes, but I had really, I'd lost over probably about 30 to 40 pounds after, you know, starting from the, when I started training for the marathon. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd had a bunch of stomach issues kind of along the way the whole time I was going through treatment and it had been misdiagnosed as a couple of different things and didn't really think too much of it until um, it was on March 31st of 2012 when I, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. And that next day was April 1st. I uh, went to church with my wife and daughter, uh, my pregnant wife um, at the time, and um, couldn't even stand up and just said, you know what, I need to go to the ER. So I went to the ER. They did a couple of t uh, blood tests. They were kind of inconclusive, but then they decided to do an ultrasound because some, I forget what the name of the thing that's in your pancreas is, but it was highly elevated, like by, you know, 300% or no, not 300%, 300 times what it should have been. And um, so they did an ultrasound, then they did a CT scan. And, and then that's where they kind of started seeing this kind of these different masses and different organs throughout my abdomen and also in my chest. Hmm. 
Let me ask you a question. So the marathon itself or the marathon training, did, did that do anything for you personally as far as the fight you'd have to go through? Did that, uh, you know, did that strengthen you? Did it prepare you in any way? Could you kind of see a correlation with what you were getting ready to go through? Completely. It was, a, it was really amazing because when I was actually diagnosed, that was one of the things that really helped me kind of, I guess, accept my cancer diagnosis. They said, you know, we have um, six rounds of chemo over the next four months. And the way I saw that, I had just done a four month training program to complete my first marathon. So it was like, okay, I've been here before. The six chemo treatments are just like the long runs. You know, you don't, uh, you, you know, you're gonna have to sit through this exhausting ordeal. You have to really, you know, work to it. And, and at the same time, you know, you have at the end of the four months, you don't know if you're gonna cross the finish line. That's the goal, that's the hope, that's really what you're working towards, um, but it's not guaranteed. And so, but, but knowing that I had just done that, that I just had a marathon, that I, I really felt like the next, you know, um, the cancer treatment marathon um, would be much easier to take on just because I had been there before. Plus, knowing that I was in the absolute peak shape I'd ever been in after, you know, you put your body through so much that you're really in the best shape of your life after going through a marathon. At least that's how I felt. Um, and so have, having the confidence that, you know, I was as physically prepared as possible, but then also just that that mental edge of knowing that I'd, I'd been there before. I'd kind of um, walked down that path and it had just done that. So, um, yeah, the, the parallels were um, kind of, uh, it was just, it was crazy to see the, the similarities between, I mean, I don't know what this says about runners, but uh, yeah. the similarities between <laughs> going through a cancer treatment. Yeah, that's amazing. So it was about four months of treatment is kind of what it was? Yes, it was. Okay. And, uh, and then after the four months, what, what kind of what kind of brought you back into running? Was it kind of, hey, you kind of experienced that before and kind of beat this mentally? So what kind of got you introduced back into running again after that? It, it Really, it was just having just run the live strong marathon i was like i need to do this again i really feel like i need to to continue running um i felt like uh a lot of it too when you're diagnosed there's a little bit of a hopeless feeling where you're like i can't do any i you know i have no say over my own health um i am at the mercy of you know either doctors or medicine um whatever and so to feel like i could actually have some role to play in my own health again, that was a huge factor for me. And also setting my sights on that next marathon was big too, because I had just run a marathon with stage four cancer and I wanted to see how I could do cancer free and see if I could beat my time. The, the hope was yes, I should, I should be able to beat it at least by a little bit. So that's really um, what, uh, what kind of inspired me to keep, uh, to keep running. Plus I think too, just you know, going back to crossing that finish line and having that, oh man, what's next? I think I'd already kind of caught the marathon bug a little bit too. And so that was another part of it as well. Um, but it really wasn't an easy, easy way to get back into it. I, I remember my first training run, it was hot outside and I didn't have any hair and I'd been on this high dose steroid that made me go a little bit crazy and I couldn't even run a mile. And I had just gone obviously from running 26.2 and then having to stop about a quarter of a mile in to catch my breath. It was, it was really frustrating. Um, but then, you know, on the, on the flip side of that, I kind of, was able to convince myself that you know I had a, I basically had a blank slate. I could start from scratch with what I wanted to do and how I could kind of build my body to be. I you know lost so much weight that I was really kind of uh, kind of starting over a little bit. So I, I I tried to spin it so that it was an opportunity to to start over and create um, what I wanted as opposed to just you know uh, sitting down and and you know whining about my uh, my experience. So was it the was it the cancer to five k program? Is that kind of where you where you began after, or did you just what what was kind of your next goal after you started running again? So I, I, the the goal was that twenty thirteen Live Strong Austin Marathon, but okay. um, but before that there was a five k and a fifteen k. Cancer to five k didn't really enter into it until after I'd completed that next marathon. Um, really, I'd, I'd I'd had a chance to meet Doug Olman, who at the time was the CEO of Live Strong and um, through a, a foundation that he actually started when he had gone through his cancer experience, um, was able to learn about the Cancer to 5K program and saw that it, it, it was in Baltimore and, and Washington DC at the time. Um, but, uh, but after I had really seen such amazing benefits from running and how much better I felt and really how much quicker I feel like I recovered because of running, um, seeing a, a program that was already in place to help survivors safely and effectively get back in shape and get back in control of their own health 
was extremely attractive to me and I called them and said, hey, are you ever thinking about expanding? And they said, actually, yes, we just got a $5,000 grant to expand and Chicago's on our list. And I said, well, I, if you need a coach, let me know. And all these pieces started falling into place. And it was really amazing how quickly we were able to get it launched in Chicago. Um, Cause that was back in, uh, yeah, the spring of 2014 was our first season. So within less than a year, we'd already had um, participants recruited and started uh, started training. You had mentioned, I think it was on your Runners World video, something I'd never heard before, that um, you didn't want to be defined just by the term survivor, that like you wanted more, your life to be more than just that. Talk about that a little bit, because I had never heard, that had never even crossed my mind, just how that that could happen. Yeah, it, it was weird, because when I was first diagnosed, they, I, I guess, People say that you're a survivor once you like at the time of your diagnosis because you have been surviving up to that point with uh, with cancer and um, you know it was, it was a little bit of a badge of honor for me at first but then I started really seeing my entire existence with the survivor label on it and I really it, it ended up kind of being more of a burden than anything else I would you know in times of you know sadness or feeling sorry for myself which I think is normal for any cancer survivor anybody who's been diagnosed to kind of go through these these, you know, ebbs and flows or highs and lows throughout the whole process. Um, I was looking back and, you know, thinking about things that have happened in my life and um, really viewed it through a lens of someone who would eventually get cancer. So I'd look back at, you know, be like, oh, yeah, well, that, that, that kid would grow up to have cancer. And so it, cancer became like the one thing that I felt like was starting to define who I was or it's how I viewed myself. And that was something that um, really I feel like, feel like, held me back a little bit. I think it's a good rallying call, but I really feel like our lives are so much more than just this this disease that once I was able to shed that identity and, and really um, it was through, uh, uh, you know, with my with my wife and a, a friend who's a minister, just being able to understand who I was as a, as a child of God and how, you know, that's not how God sees me. That's not how my family sees me. I meant for way much more than just, um, just being a survivor. Uh, that, you know, sure, it's part of my story, but it's not the whole thing. And I didn't have to view myself as that. I'm somebody way more than that. Um, I mean, I, 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 it's, it's amazing now thinking about how cancer has impacted my life and how, how many positive things have come out of that experience. But it's um, still not the, you know, the one thing that defines who I am. Um, so you, you start coaching, and that was in 2014, is that when you said? Is that when you got started yes. in Chicago? Yes, 2014. For someone that does not doesn't know anything about um, cancer to five k, can they give us a little bit of an overview of how it works and what what you do as a coach? Yeah, so the the program it's it's very similar uh, to a couch to five k program where we really just start um, start very small. So it's it's a twelve week free training program where survivors also get a free race entry to a five k, um, and. Um, yeah, I mean, start out very gradually. We partner with uh, with um, different companies in our in our areas too. So in Chicago, we're partner with Running Away Multisport, and they're very generous and donate a pair of shoes also to each survivor to help with the the gear aspect of it to make it. Um, I mean, totally free. I mean, that's like the yeah, one major expense correct. for people getting into running. And so to be able to have a good partner like that is absolutely amazing. Um, so they they also um, that's one of the five Ks that we run too is through running away. We do the hot chocolate five K. That's what we just did in November. Okay. Um, and so we meet a couple of times a week. We um, we've had anywhere from five to thirty participants, and um, it's really I mean not only just a, a training group to get to run together, but also a support group. I think um, without. If, if you haven't really been through a cancer experience or haven't been diagnosed, especially for those of us who are young adults who are diagnosed, where we're kind of in, you know, the middle of our lives where we're trying to either go through school or start a family or start a career, all these different things where we kind of have to put on the back burner. There's, um, I think it, it's a huge help to have this support group of people that really understand where we are and where we've come, come from. And um, it really is a way to, you know, discuss things with a group of people that have, you know, been exactly where you've been. So I think that's a, that's another great aspect of it for, for survivors. 
Yeah, and that that was going to be kind of my next question. I'd be curious about the nursery. I'm like, hey, hey, say something if this is not the case. But I'd love to just kind of hear from about the relationships in this. And so, what 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 do the relationships mean for you as you began training again? And 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 what 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 do the relationships look like for people who were trying to get it back on the road again? Just kind of, can you speak to some of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me as a coach, it's uh, it's been great. It's not a an, an overly you know like. I don't know if I should say it's serious program. It's not like I'm, you know, kind of a, a task master, master or anything like that. Yeah. We really are a, a, a group that just tries to encourage one another and really try to to help us achieve certain goals. So if people do want to have a specific time that they want to meet, then we we help coach them along with that. And uh, um, you know, we, we do have. I'm a certified through RCA, so we have um, credentials to be able to uh, to back that part up. But really, we we go out there and and we become really good friends. I mean, um, we see each other outside as much as we much as we possibly can. I mean, we have our our two times a uh, two times a week where we're actually training, but in the off season we try to get together as well. Um, but I mean, I, I have some lifelong friends through it from other coaches and and our volunteer Sherpas as well. And then also, um, it's just a, a chance for me as a coach to also try to be a, a, a mentor to other people because I've, I've, I've been through the cancer experience and I've gone through chemo and I know what it's like to, to sit in a chemo chair for eight hours and have chemicals pumped through my body. It's just uh, it's something that's, you know, r- relatable to a select few of us. Um, but, uh, but I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing to, to have these different people. And I mean, we, we absolutely have made lifelong friends with uh, with number of the not only participants but the volunteers as well and the volunteers are absolutely amazing too i mean they have various ties to cancer or none at all or they just want to get out and run and see this is a great chance to to be part of this group and uh, part of this organization so um i mean it's uh, benefits for everybody all around yeah you had mentioned the sherpas are those the volunteers yes yeah, okay. so with Cancer to 5K, we don't want any survivor to ever have to run alone. And so by having a, a Sherpa as our guide, then there's somebody who can always be there to encourage, to be alongside and, you know, carry a water bottle, do whatever, just to be there to make sure that nobody has to has to uh, to run alone. That's really cool. Are there any stories that stand out to you of the, the folks that you've trained? Um, any Anybody that, that stands out? So in four seasons, yeah, I mean, I, I think for, for each season, there's been a, a few different people. So really our, our first season, there was a lady, Kim, who um, um, had just been through treatment and we, she was actually part of the online program, which was interesting that, uh, that she comes to mind first. But um, just the, the joy that I saw on her face when she crossed the finish line was something absolutely amazing. Then we've had a number of people who have been going through treatment while we've been doing the program. Um, Shanette is somebody else who... Um, has just been battling breast cancer for the last, I think, like five years or so. And she's, you know, continues to battle to this day, but she's, you know, graduated through the program to become a Sherpa as well. And we've had a number of those too that have been able to, to, to you, you can go through two seasons as a survivor, or I guess as a participant, I should say, and then you can, you can become a Sherpa after that if they want to stay involved in the program. And we've seen a number of people do that, which has been, which has been a great experience too. And there, there have been others as well that have just, uh, um, you know, this absolute fighters, you can just see the spirit that's allowed them to, to, to get past this and continue to fight and continue to, to make relationships with people in the, in the cancer community as well. What's the, the coaching process like? You, you might've already mentioned it, but how, how long is the program? 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Okay. So mm-hmm. is there, is there usually a, like I mentioned the hot chocolate, is there usually like a goal race that you guys are, are training for? Yeah, so in the in the fall it'll be the hot chocolate 5K, and for the last, uh, for, I guess for the first two spring seasons we've run in the um, Lurie Cancer Center Survivors Day 5K, um, which is affiliated with Northwestern Memorial Hospital, which is where which is where I was treated when I was going through my cancer uh, treatment. Gotcha. And where where are the other ones based out of? They're both in Chicago. No, sorry, the oh, other oh, the other the other groups. Yeah. Yeah. So there's Baltimore is the the first one. They also have. Um, DC, North Virginia, Montgomery County. There's a few in that area, and I think that's. I think there. I think four. I think that's right. And then there's also um, Chicago was the first out of that area. Then we have Boston and New York just launched this past year, hmm. and then we are in the process of starting a Southern California as well, um, and hopefully growing um, 
after that uh, soon. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. Now, is this is this what you do, or is this a, a passion project, or? Oh, uh, very much a passion project. I mean, it okay. would be awesome if that's what I did. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. uh, I, 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 in my my day job, I work for IBM, and okay. um, also right. in the process too of starting a compression running sock company that oh, wow. I will then use the proceeds to help fund the expansion of Cancer to 5K. So that's another hobby project that I'm working on right now that hopefully will get up and going here in the first quarter of 2016. That is that's awesome. What, what is that process like of starting uh, a clothing company? We actually were talking to some folks other today. I think they're in Wisconsin and they had just started making some shirts. But how, how has that process been for you? Um, well, for socks, it was interesting. The first thing I did was Google sock manufacturers. And then, of course, yeah. there's like a billion things that come up and you can't really narrow that down by saying sock manufacturing in Asia. Um, yeah. So then I started looking up textile manufacturers in the U.S. and was able to uh, find some places that I was able to call on and, and found someone down in, in North Carolina that uh, that I'm going to have be uh, have manufactured my socks here. Um, you know, we've had a few samples run, and we're we're looking to get that thing going um, up here pretty soon. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a long process. It's been an interesting process to try to figure out how to go about even sourcing these things when I'm not going to be making them myself, and I'm going to be myself, and I'm going to be going through a third party manufacturer. So um, it's been interesting, but it's been a, a cool experience, and also cool to see how certain people are really helpful and and want to see people right. do well, especially. Looking at an area like uh, like North Carolina, where of course they've seen a number of jobs go overseas, so to have mm -hmm. have some uh, somebody coming in to try to get some other manufacturing done down there, I think is appreciated. Which is why it's I think been a little bit easier at times, but it's also it's it's a slow process. It's 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 long to get things going, especially when you're balancing a full time job and a wife and two small children. Yeah, definitely. So what's what's next for you other than the coaching and the socks and the job and the kids? Do you have any races on your calendar that you're training for specifically? Yeah, I'm running the LA Marathon in February. Nice. So I'm pretty pretty That's pumped great. up about that. I was I was planning on doing Chicago this year, but I had my appendix taken out in uh, the middle of training, so it uh, oh. it tanked my training. So uh um, but I think it, it works out pretty well because now I get to escape the Chicago winter and go to LA for a few <laughs> yeah. days. So I can't that's really not complain. a bad trade-off. Yeah, that's that's really yeah. good. I like that. That's great. That's great. Hey, uh, so r r real quick as we begin wrapping up, t tell us. Can you kind of tell us the process of how the the whole Runners World uh, cover search how how that how that happened? Yeah, so I, I had actually seen something pop up on my Facebook feed about, you know, do you want to be on the cover of Runner's World? And yeah. then I was like, yeah, I'd like to be on the cover of Runner's World. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> so I, I, I clicked on it, and uh, they had, I think, three questions on there, and there was a maximum word count of about 50 words. And I was like, oh, I can bang this out in about two minutes. You know, I'm so used to telling my, my story that the questions were easy. And, uh, you know, if it would have been a full paragraph, then I, I may not have actually applied, but because it was yeah. – such a, a, a small requirement, it was a, a little bit easier. And then, you know, I hit submit, and then I didn't think anything would come of it. I, I'm not, you know, historically much of a contest winner. And uh, so I really forgot about it until I got an email from Bart Yasso saying, congratulations, you're a finalist. And <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, you know, what kind of spam email address is yeah. this? And I replied back. Because at, at the time, you know, I know Runner's World. I didn't know Rodale, and yeah. so I responded to Bar, you know, the, his his email address at uh, at that, and um, wow. writes immediately back. And I'm like, wait a second, this is he's actually <laughs> he's a human being. This guy doesn't sleep. He's just so energetic and so uh, um, all over it. And I was like, oh man, this is actually legitimate. This is pretty cool that I uh, that I made it to this point. And uh, and, and then I went and looked at what the score was. And I know the top vote getter at the time had like 50,000 votes or something like that. And I think I had two votes, two or three votes. But, um, fortunately for me, the judges were um, reading every single application that came in. So to their credit, they they read all the stories. And then I was uh, fortunate enough that I got selected to be in the in the top ten finalists. That's great. Well, I, I know one thing, it, it, it tugged on our heartstrings. We all know people who are overcoming things. And so it was it was really neat to hear your story. It's been great to, to talk with you. And, and hey, keep us posted on the compression socks, too. By the time this show comes out, we would love to be able to post that link on there and let people kind of support the calls as well. So keep us posted on that. We'd love to get that, get the word out, too. So Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. If anybody uh, looking for for organizations to get involved with Cancer to 5K, it's a it's a great organization, and if you, uh, uh, I, I'm sure too, we can have coaches in other cities. You want to start it? Let us know. We're uh, we're willing to expand, and also yeah, get ready to buy my get, buy the compression socks so we can afford to expand. 
<laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, sounds if, good. if people did want to get involved with Cancer to 5K, uh, where, where would you point them to get it? Um, they can either go to cancer to 5k.com or um, that usually redirects you, I think, to olmancancerfund.org. Sounds good. And it sounds like you can sign up uh, as a Sherpa if you just want to help out. And is that right? Yeah, yeah. We, we, the more the merrier. We love having people out there, people to run with. So, yeah, any Sherpas out there in uh, Southern California, Chicago, or the East Coast, let us know. Sounds great. Well, well, thanks again. And uh, it's been a pleasure to talk with you, Michael. We, we've enjoyed the story. And uh, thanks for taking some time out today. Oh, thank you so much. I had a good time. All right. Take care now. All right. Bye-bye.